a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. California Proposition 218, 1996 Proposition 218 was an adopted initiative constitutional amendment which revolutionized local and regional government finance in California. Called the, Right to Vote on Taxes Act, it was sponsored by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association as a constitutional follow-up to the landmark property tax revolt initiative constitutional amendment. Proposition 13, approved in 1978. Proposition 218 achieved what was originally intended by Proposition 13 by giving the final decision on taxes to local voters instead of local politicians. In adopting Proposition 218, California voters stated the underlying basis for the measure by declaring, Proposition 13 was intended to provide effective tax relief and to require voter approval of tax increases. However, local governments have subjected taxpayers to excessive tax assessment, fee and charge increases that not only frustrate the purposes of voter approval for tax increases, but also threaten the economic security of all Californians and the California economy itself. This measure protects taxpayers by limiting the methods by which local governments exact revenue from taxpayers without their consent. Proposition 218 amended the California Constitution by adding Article 13c, and Article 13d Article 13c added constitutional voter approval requirements for all local government taxes which previously did not exist. This also includes a significant provision expanding the constitutional local initiative power by voters to reduce or repeal any local government tax, assessment, fee or charge, subject to a significantly reduced signature requirement making ballot qualification much easier. Article 13d added constitutional assessment and property-related fee reforms applicable to all local governments which also previously did not exist. This includes numerous additional requirements for special benefit assessments on real property as well as numerous requirements for property-related fees and charges, such as utility fees imposed by local governments which are no longer allowed to exceed the cost of providing the utility service. Proposition 218 is listed as one of the most significant laws of the 20th century in California. Proposition 218 was the first successful initiative constitutional amendment in California history to add more than one article to the California Constitution, as well as to alter the scope of the constitutional initiative power. General Information Proposition 218 was adopted during the November 5, 1996 general election in California. The official legal title of the measure was, Voter Approval for Local Government Taxes. Limitations on fees, assessments, and charges. Initiative Constitutional Amendment. Proposition 218 was drafted by constitutional attorneys Jonathan Kupel and Jack Cohen. Conditions leading to Proposition 218. The assessment and property-related fee reforms contained in Proposition 218 resulted from local government excesses in the 1980s and 1990s following the passage of Proposition 13. After Proposition 13 passed in 1978, local governments looked for ways to raise additional revenues and avoid the two-thirds voter approval requirement for special taxes under Proposition 13. Proposition 218 proponents claimed that local governments discovered a particularly pernicious way to raise additional revenues and avoid the Proposition 13 two-thirds local voter approval requirement by using assessment districts. Assessments on real property became the vehicle of choice for local politicians looking to avoid making hard decisions regarding general fund expenditures. The 1992 California Supreme Court Knox case the property assessment loophole floodgates opened wide following a controversial 1992 California Supreme Court decision holding that Proposition 13 restrictions, particularly the two-thirds voter approval requirement for local taxes, did not apply to assessments on real property. As a result of the Knox decision, local governments could legally impose assessments on real property for a wide range of purposes without voter approval. Assessments effectively became unrestricted property tax increases appearing on the property tax bills of millions of California property owners. 
There were no legal limits on how high assessments could go, or how many assessments could be imposed on a parcel of property. Once the assessment loophole following the Knox case was created, one lawyer working with local government politicians wrote that property assessments in California are now limited only by the limits of human imagination. Some of the more imaginative assessments imposed by local governments included a view tax. In Southern California the better the view of the ocean the property owner had the more the owner paid. In Northern California, property owners 27 miles away from a park were assessed because their property supposedly benefited from that park. Property-related fee and charge abuses by local governments While not receiving the same level of media attention as assessments on real property, controversial property-related fees and charges became a significant problem following the passage of Proposition 13, as many local governments labeled taxes as fees or charges and imposed them without voter approval. For example, the California Supreme Court ruled that a local municipal utility, such as a city providing water service, is entitled to a reasonable return on investment. This meant that a local municipal utility could legally overcharge its customers in excess of the cost of providing the utility service, and then transfer the excess cost revenues to the general fund of the local agency to be spent at the discretion of local politicians. All this could generally be done without voter approval. Proposition 218 Election Campaign Proposition 218 was considered a sleeper measure by the media as local governments were prohibited from using public funds and resources to campaign against it, and because greater media attention had been given to the Proposition 209 ban on affirmative action and the Proposition 215 medical marijuana initiative measures which appeared on the same election ballot. Proposition 218 was initially estimated to cost local governments in California at least $100 million per year with long-term cost estimates being much greater in the billions of dollars per year. And Moody's Investors Service warned the initiative measure would cause significantly declining credit quality. The credit ratings issue became so heated during the Proposition 218 election campaign that the California State Treasurer, in an effort to calm the municipal bond market, took the extraordinary step of warning measure opponents against exaggerating the possible negative impacts on local government credit ratings and bond issuances when discussing Proposition 218. Campaign Opposition and Support Like Proposition 13 in 1978, Proposition 218 was opposed by the vast majority of major newspapers in the political establishment. Opposition to Proposition 218 included public employee unions, local governments, local government interest organizations, environmental interest groups, public education interest groups, and private business firms that underwrite municipal bonds. Of the total campaign contributions received against Proposition 218, 74% came from public employee unions, and those interests contributing $10,000 or more represented 91% of the total contributions received by the Proposition 218 opposition campaign. Also similar to Proposition 13, there were dire predictions from the measure opponents, including many local government officials, regarding what would happen if Proposition 218 were to be approved by the voters. Some examples included, expensive landscaping would die and become fodder for devastating fires. Silicon Valley would be shut down forever. Parks, senior centers, and other public buildings would shut down. Neighborhoods would no longer be safe. The initiative would immediately have a devastating effect on local government finance. The initiative would force local governments to go back decades and destroy their method of service delivery. The initiative would be a mortal threat to fire safety. The supporters of Proposition 218 focused on the main benefit presented by the ballot measure that voters would have the constitutional right to vote on local government taxes. Proposition 218 supporters also urged voters to review their property tax bill which would confirm the growing list of property-related fees, charges and assessments imposed by local governments without voter approval. Election Results and Summary Statistics Proposition 218 passed with 56.55% support statewide, 
representing a margin of victory of 13.1 percentage points. Proposition 218 passed in 54 of the 58 counties in California. Proposition 218 passed in 405 of the 469 cities in California in 1996. Proposition 218 passed in 67 of the 80 current state assembly districts and 34 of the 40 current state senate districts in California. This means that Proposition 218 passed in the overwhelming majority of current state legislative districts in California without regard to the political party representation in those districts. For the 2017-18 legislative session, Proposition 218 passed in more than 75% of the legislative districts held by Democrats and in 100% of the legislative districts held by Republicans. Proposition 218 received 62% support in the 26 California counties with a Republican voter registration advantage, and 54% support in the 32 California counties with a Democratic voter registration advantage during the November 1996 statewide election. What made the Proposition 218 victory so unusual was that it was behind in nearly all the polls, including late polls before the election. Polling from the Proposition 218 opposition campaign revealed the measure was expected to lose by about 15 percentage points. Proposition 218 was also significantly behind in the final field poll with only 36% support from likely voters. Proposition 218 ended up winning by 13 percentage points. The large variation between the final polling numbers and the election results was a politically rare event for statewide initiative measures in California. Profound Impact on California Governance Following the November 1996 election, a high-level official from the California State Association of Counties wrote that Proposition 218 profoundly changes the way California is governed and may prove to be the most revolutionary act in the history of California. The author of an article in a League of California Cities publication wrote the following about the passage of Proposition 218. Voters now hold the power to direct or withdraw monetary resources for government functions. Motivated by distrust, the voters' objective was to replace reliance on elected representatives with direct voter control over local government finances. Joel Fox President of the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association when Proposition 218 passed, stated that Proposition 218 is not in the Proposition 13 class, but it's the next level. Local Government Section 1 definitions include the term, local government, setting forth the public entities subject to the article, the term, local government. The purposes of Proposition 218 is very broadly defined to counter a previous narrow interpretation given by the California Supreme Court under Proposition 13 which created loopholes allowing local agencies to circumvent constitutional voter approval requirements for taxes. Government entities subject to Proposition 218 are local and regional governments, including counties, cities, a city and county, school districts community college districts, public authorities, joint powers agencies, and special districts such as water districts or agencies. The local government definition also expressly states that it includes charter cities having a local charter as their primary source of power. Local tax types Section 1 also defines the types of taxes local governments levy. A. General tax is any tax imposed for general governmental purposes. A. Special tax is any tax imposed for specific purposes, including a tax imposed for specific purposes which is placed into a general fund. The general versus special tax distinction existed in California prior to Proposition 218, but Proposition 218 contains a broader definition of special tax, as also including taxes imposed for specific purposes that are placed into a general fund. Special tax of a local government tax is legally dedicated for one or more specific purposes it is a special tax. Proposition 218 also requires certain taxes relating to real property be levied as special taxes. Proposition 218 further specifies that many local governments 
including school districts, do not have the power to levy general taxes which means that such local governments can only levy special taxes. General tax to the extent a local government has the power to levy a general tax and that a particular tax is not required to be levied as a special tax. A tax is general only when its revenues are placed into the general fund of the local government and are available for expenditure for any and all governmental purposes. The courts have yet to interpret under what circumstances tax revenues placed into a general fund are a special tax by virtue of being imposed for specific purposes, under the broad, special tax, definition. As a result, the mere placement of local tax proceeds into a general fund does not automatically make the tax a general tax, under Proposition 218. Tax, Definition and Proposition 26, 2010 During the November 2010 general election, California voters passed Proposition 26 which, in part, added a broad constitutional definition of tax, for purposes of Proposition 218. Proposition 218 did not include a specific constitutional definition of tax, but California appellate courts, prior to the passage of Proposition 26 in 2010, generally broadly construed what constitutes a tax, such as concluding that a 911 fee was a special tax subject to two-thirds voter approval. If a local government levy, charge or exaction is a tax, under the Proposition 26 constitutional definition, then voter approval is required under Proposition 218 if that tax is a new tax, an increased tax, or a tax extension. A local government levy that is not a tax under Proposition the 26th of May nonetheless be subject to Proposition 218 constitutional protections under Article 13d if the levy is either a special assessment on real property, or a property-related fee or charge. Local initiative power to reduce or appeal non-tax fees and charges Local government fees and charges that are neither taxes under Proposition 26 nor subject to Article 13d are generally subject to reduction or appeal using the local initiative power under Proposition 218, including the significantly reduced signature requirement thereunder. This gives local voters a legislative remedy to hold an election concerning a non-tax levy approved by a local government where an election is not automatically required by Proposition 218. One example is a fee on the extraction of groundwater. In 2017, the California Supreme Court held that a fee imposed upon persons on the extraction of groundwater is no longer a property-related fee subject to the requirements of Proposition 218, although such fees remain subject to the provisions of Proposition 26. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?